In today's video, I'll talk about two different PC builds under $1,000 that you can actually buy right now. One has integrated graphics, so it's going to be a little bit more limited for gaming, but you have to keep in mind that this one is more of a gaming PC for future upgrade abilities, and the other PC build is going to be way better for gaming right now, and you still have room for future upgrade ability, and that's the one that I recommend you the most, especially at 1080p gaming, but of course, if you are working with a really tight budget, the one with integrated graphics is still going to make sense. Without more to say, let's start with these builds. So first, we are going to go over the one that has integrated graphics, the total price will be around $620, so it's actually not expensive and you're going to get a really decent experience at 1080p, especially if you're going to play esports titles such as Valorant, Fortnite and CSGO. For the CPU and also the GPU, we have the Ryzen 5 5600G. It's slightly worse than the 5600X, but you get those integrated graphics that you will definitely need if you want to start gaming at 1080p on a budget. Then for the motherboard, I went with the Gigabyte B550 Gaming ATX motherboard. This one doesn't have Wi-Fi included, so if you're not going to have it connected to an Ethernet cable, just make sure to buy a Wi-Fi adapter. Then for the memory kit, I went with the Silicon Power 16GB of RAM 2x8 of the DR4 3200MHz CL60 memory. This is basically all you're going to need for gaming. Believe me that you don't need 32GB of RAM at all, unless you're going to do some heavy multitasking, but if you're working on a budget, it's definitely not needed. Then for the storage, I went with this crucial 1TB of M.2 SSD. Once again, all that we're going to need on a budget. If you want this PC to be even cheaper, you can go with 500 gigs of SSD, but you're going to be more limited. So I would recommend one terabyte, but if you don't have the budget to, just go with 500 gigs of SSD and you upgrade it over time. Then for the case, I went with the Fantex Eclipse P360A ATX case. This is the one that I put in almost all of the builds that I recommend buying because you get those two front fans, you get great airflow and you're not spending a lot of money on it. And then for the power supply, one of the most important parts of this build, I've got the Fantex 550W ADA Plus called power supply. Now you can go maybe with a 750W one, but I wouldn't spend much more considering that this PC is actually on a budget and it will only take around 170W. So even if you put a high-end graphics card, it's not going to be a problem for a 550W 80 plus gold power supply. Now of course you don't want to put a 3090 on this PC, but I would recommend going for a 3050, 2060 or a 3060. Now if you're going for AMD, I will go with the RX 66 Sanguid or the RX 66 Sanguid XT, especially for 1080p. And if you want to go for 1440p, I will go with the 67 Sanguid XT or the RTX 3060 Ti. Now you can definitely go with a temporary GPU if you want better performance. You can buy a graphics card that is used on eBay, let's say the GTX 1650 Super for 140 bucks, which is really cheap and you're going to get a way better experience, especially at 1080p. The 1650 Super is actually a really good GPU. I know that it's becoming old, but that doesn't mean that it's a bad GPU. If you want to play games like GTA 5, even Red Dead Redemption 2 at medium to high settings. At 1080p, I think this graphics card is going to be great. And for those esports titles that I've mentioned before, you're going to be playing at above 144 FPS. And this will allow you to have a 1080p 144Hz monitor. So like I've said before, this one is 620 bucks, And if you add the graphics card, it's going to cost you around $760. Definitely a great price for a starting gaming PC and if you get it without a graphics card because you don't have the budget to buy one, it's going to be decent for right now, but of course this PC is to upgrade down the line, so overall I think it's a great buy in my opinion. And with the second build, and this one is the one that I recommend you the most, we have one that is still under $1,000, it's actually 956 bucks, but you're getting a way better performance for 1080p right now, and it's also upgradable, and I will explain why in a second, and I will also explain how to make this PC cheaper or a little bit more expensive if you have above $1,000, which is going to make your overall experience way better, not only for gaming, but also for multitasking and video editing. 
For the CPU, I went with the i3-12100F. Remember that we are talking about gaming PC builds, so the F is going to make a lot of sense. If you don't get the F version, you're going to get integrated graphics as well, which is going to help you out with video editing. So if you're really into video editing, go with the 12100 instead of the 12100F. It's going to cost you around an extra $20. Then for the motherboard, I went with the MSI V660 Tomahawk Wi-Fi motherboard. This one has Wi-Fi included, so you don't have to worry about an Ethernet cable. Then for the memory, I went with the same kit, same goes with the storage. And for the graphics card, I went with the RX 6600. This is the one that I recommended before. For 1080p, it's actually one of the best GPUs that you can get out there, right next to the RTX 3060, 6600 XT, and the 3060 Ti. Then for the case, I went with the same one same goes with the case fan but with the power supply i went with the 750 watt 80 plus cold power supply from enermax now it's a totally overkill for this type of build but remember that this makes it upgradable so in the future even if you want to put like the rtx 3080 you're going to be capable of doing it but if you're going to put that high end of a graphics card you want to upgrade the cpu to at least the i5 12400 the good thing about this motherboard is that you can upgrade the CPU with any of the 12th gen of Intel CPUs. So let's say you want to go with the i7 12700K, it's definitely possible because of the power supply and the motherboard. So like I said, this is a really upgradable gaming desktop at 956 bucks. If you have a lower budget, like I said with the previous PC, you want to go down on the storage to 500 gigs of SSD and upgrade it over time. And maybe you can downgrade the motherboard if you're not going to be connected via Wi-Fi. And if your budget is actually above a thousand dollars, let's say a thousand and seventy-five dollars, then I would actually recommend you upgrading the CPU to the i5-12400, the non-F version, because it will be a better option for multitasking. And then you add a CPU cooler. I went with the Cooler Master Hyper 212 RGB Black Edition. This one will be perfect for this type of CPU. This is a great upgrade for both gaming and multitasking, just for $120 more expensive. So it really depends on your budget and your needs. If you're just going to do 1080p gaming, then don't even bother upgrading it to the i5-12400 or the CPU cooler because the i3 is going to be just fine with the stock cooler. But if you want a better performance and you have more than a thousand dollars, I actually think that it's a great upgrade. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like and subscribe. But most importantly, hit that bell button so you get notified when I upload this type of content. And if you have a different budget, let's say two thousand dollars, a thousand and five hundred, I have a bunch of videos about PC builds and also pre-built PCs in case you don't want to build it by yourself. So you can check those videos on my channel. Basically, my whole channel it's about pre-built and PC build videos. Sometimes I make monitor and other stuff but mostly it's about gaming desktops so if you're into this type of videos please support the channel it means a lot to me thank you guys for watching thank you for the support and i will see you on the next one